Hello, my name is Julie Pessina, and I'm going to be talking to you today about four principles in special education. I'm going to talk about parent participation, due process, FAPE, free appropriate public education, and IEP, Individualized Educational Program or Plan. And those four topics are part of the six principles that were established when the special ed law, PL 94142, Education for All Handicapped Children Act, was passed in 1975. And this law set the stage for special ed as we know it. It set all the guidelines for special ed as a field. It was established in 1975, right after the Civil Rights Movement. Um, in the 1960s, people were fighting for rights for minorities. And at that time, in the late 60s, parents, educators, and legislators um, wanted to look at fighting for the rights of children with disabilities. And so because of the Civil Rights Movement, that led directly to the legislation um, that helped students with special needs get educated. Prior to that, students with special needs did not go to school. They didn't have a right to go to school. Um, there was really nothing for them. So they basically stayed at home, or they were put into institutions. They were in the back room of the house, really weren't seen in public. And so it wasn't until 1975, with that legislation, that they had a right to be educated. So, when that law was passed, these six principles, the four that I talked about, parent participation, due process, FAPE, IEP, um, there was a list of disabilities that were eligible to receive special education that was given with that law. And the concept of LRE, least restrictive environment, um, came about because of that legislation. So the first topic parent participation. By law, parents have a right um, to participate in the process of helping to educate their children. They have a right to be part of the process. Um, they have a right to go to meetings. They have a right to disagree. They are required, essentially by law, to be involved in the entire process before special ed, during special ed, and then after special ed. So by law, parents are required to give permission for their child to be tested. If they say no, we have to honor that. We can't force a parent to have their child tested. Um, so parent participation is one of the strong components in helping those students be successful. Um, when you become a teacher, there's going to be varying degrees of parent participation. You're going to see those that are going to go all out. There's going to be a strong collaboration with the teacher. You're going to have daily contact with them. They have questions. Um, they have suggestions. And then you'll see the extreme, the parent that doesn't want to necessarily be involved, that is just going to let you take over. You're the teacher. You do what you have to. So as a teacher, you'll see varying degrees of parent participation. But please know that it is part of the law. The next topic is due process, also known as parents' rights. Um, so it kind of goes along with parent participation. Due process is when um, parents have the right to be satisfied with their child's education. Um, they have a right to request paperwork. They have a right to look at what their child is being taught and how their child is being taught. And if a parent is not in agreement with that, then we say they have a right to due process. They have a right to take the school system or the teacher to court, if it gets to that. Normally, it doesn't. And so the goal is always not to let it get to the point of the court system. We always want to step in, do some mediation, um, do lots of consultation with the parents. Many times they don't 
necessarily know a lot about the law and about how to um, teach their child. And so as teachers, we have to step in and in a sense help train the parent as well. Even though the parents are the child's first teacher, they're your number one resource and source to go to when you have questions. At the same time, they need to be informed about the most up-to-date strategies or technology that's available out there. And so as a teacher, that's part of your job, is to be informed of what is out there. You're the one that goes to conferences. You're the one that goes to in-services. So you have access to the most up-to-date information for the parents. Um, so due process, again, has to do with parental rights and helping to honor that. Again, part of the law, so the law say, says that we have to have these things in place. The third topic, free, appropriate, public education. And just like it sounds, it's the right of the student to have FAPE, to have a free, appropriate public education. Again, prior to the law passed in 1975, students with disabilities didn't have a right to go to school. They didn't go to school. Um, there were no services for them. And so the idea of FAPE is that they now have a right to go to school. They have a right to be educated by someone highly trained in that area. Um, they can go to school for free just like every other student. So being able to go to school is now something these students have a right to do. Um, and again, all the principles are connected. So if parents are not satisfied with the type of education their child is being um, given or offered, again, they have a right to due process. They have a right to be satisfied, just like any other parent. If I am not too happy with my child's teacher, I have a right to go question the principal or question that teacher. And so parents of students with disabilities have that right as well. The next topic, IEP, stands for Individualized Education Program or Plan, and it is a document it's a legal binding document that tells us what to teach the special ed student. Um, it's individualized because it's tailor-made for that student. It's based on the results of the assessment. So based on how he was assessed, what the results were, what that shows in terms of strengths and weaknesses, we then develop this document that outlines objectives, goals and objectives for the year, um, services, uh, timelines. It would outline transition uh, plans if the student is a secondary student, uh, modifications. So it's an all-encompassing document that tells us what to do for that student for a whole year. So it's like a, a contract. Um, so I, what I tell my students is that it's a year-long lesson plan for the special ed student. So once a student qualifies for special ed, then they then have an IEP drawn up by another acronym, the ARD committee, the Admissions Review Dismissal Committee. And so this group establishes the IEP. The ARD draws up the IEP. Um, other districts might call this a evaluation team or a multidisciplinary team, but it's really just the group of people that help to write the IEP. And going back to how these are connected, parents are part of the ARD committee. So they have a right Going back to parent participation, they have a right to participate in the committee that draws up the year-long lesson plan, the IEP for the student. Um, 
when the legislation was passed, when this law was passed, that law gave us a list of the disabilities or a list of the eligibility categories um, eligible to receive special education. So that was one of the principles. And the last big concept, least restrictive environment, least restrictive environment. And that really just means placement. What is the best placement for this student? Will he do well in a resource classroom or a separate self-contained classroom? Or should he be at a Texas School for the Blind? So it's a, we call it a continuum of services. It's different levels and it's dependent on the disability as well as what the art committee feels is best for that student. So the art committee, they write up the IEP and then they determine the placement for the student. And the parent is part of that. So everything is connected. Thank you.